All right, this is the third time. Third time is the charm. This is the Minister ML Kimball. Good evening. We are going to get into our Bible study. I'm going to make this short, sweet, and quick. I've got some tax returns to get done tonight, so I don't have long, but we're going to do this very, very quick. Get your Bibles out. Let's get to this, and I want to get uh, you into the scripture with me. Let's go to the prophet Isaiah tonight. I am going to share my screen with you. Those of you that do have your Bibles, I'm going to get into the King James Version. Uh, those of you that love King James, that's where we're going to be tonight. However, you will notice that wherever it says Lord or God, I am not going to address the Most High with those fictitious names. Now, the bottom line is we say hallelujah. They were saying Kumbaya. Well, then obviously there's a name in that name that we need to understand. And I choose to call him by what he said his name was in the Apocrypha, in the book of Isaiah. He identifies himself when he says, I am Yahuwah, and that is my name. So I personally am going to call him as such. So even though you see me read scripture, whatever's in the scripture, calling him as Lord or God, you will see me call him as Yahuwah. Like I said, please don't forget to like, share, and comment, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you'd like to join our partnership, you can choose from one of the memberships in our Patreon, and that will be in this video instructions to do so as well. Now, without further ado, I want you to go to the book of Isaiah chapter number 10. We're going to get through this very quickly, and I'm just going to start at verse 1. He says, woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees and that right grievousness which they have prescribed to turn aside the needy from judgment and to take away the right from the poor of my people that widows may be their prey and that they may rob the fatherless. And what will you do in the day of visitation and in the desolation which shall come from far? To whom will you flee for help and where will you leave your glory? Without me, they shall bow down under the prisoners and they shall fall under the slain. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. O Assyrian, the rod of mine anger and the staff in their hand is my indignation. I will send him against a hypocritical, hypocritical, Nation, hypocritical nation, hypocritical, 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 I cannot say that word, hypocritical nation, and against the people of my wrath, will I give him a charge to take the spoil and to take the prey and to tread them down like the mire of the streets. Howbeit he meaneth not so, neither doth his heart think so but it is in his heart to destroy and cut off nations, not a few. Now I want to skip down to verse 12. He says, wherefore it shall come to pass that when Yahuwah has performed his whole work upon Mount Zion and on Jerusalem, I will punish the fruit of the stout heart of the king of Assyria and the glory of his high looks. For he has said by the strength of my hand, I have done it by my wisdom for I am prudent. And I've removed the bounds of the people and have robbed their treasures and I put down the inhabitants like a valid man. Uh, I want you to skip on over here to verse number 16. He says, therefore shall the Yahuwah of hosts send among his fat ones leanness and under his glory, he shall kindle a burning like the burning of a fire. Stay with me. Verse 17, and the light of Israel shall be for a fire and his holy one for a flame and it shall burn and devour his thorns and his beers in one day. Stay with me and shall consume the glory of his forest and of the fruitful field, both soul and body. And they shall be as when a standard bearer fainted and the rest of the trees of his forest shall be few that a child may write them. And it shall come to pass in that day. Understand whatever he's saying in that day, we must ask ourselves, what day is he talking about? We're not just going to skate past the day. And that's the day of the Lord or the day of Yahuwah. That is what we don't want to talk about. Nobody wants to deal with it. Everybody wants to skate past it like it's not going to happen. But why are the prophets warning and preparing us for this day? So as we continue, he says, it shall come to pass in that day 
that the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more again stay upon him that smote them, but shall stay upon Yahuwah, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, unto the mighty Yahuwah. So we've got to understand he's talking about a remnant. Now, we have a confusion thinking that the remnant is only talking about the historical heritage when we must understand that whenever this is talking about a remnant, he's talking about not only the heritage, but those that obeyed his commands. So it doesn't matter what color you are, you can be saved. It just comes down to, are you listening and obeying what he said to do and not to do? So again, you Hebrew Israelites, you lose me here when you try to single out like you're the only ones that are going to be saved, but you're living lives raggedy. You're living lives where you know you should not be living. You're living in adultery. You're living in fornication. You're doing all of the things that the Bible says don't do, but yet you think somehow you're saved because of heritage, which makes you a flat out scam, period. There's nowhere in scripture that can confirm that logic of thinking, not especially when he tells us everywhere in scripture that we must obey. So he says, for though thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. So he's again telling you only a few will be saved. We read this in Ezra's today where he said there's going to be far more unsaved than saved. So that means some of these people running around thinking, calling themselves saved, sanctified. Oh, you'd have to tell me why was the prophet saying that more are going to be saved, less uh, unsaved than saved? Because some of us don't want to realize that we are living a lie if we think that somehow we're going to slide into heaven because we somehow took and believed in faith but yet we disobeyed every single thing that the Most High told us not to do. The consumption decree shall overflow with righteousness for Yahuwah of hosts shall make a consumption even determined in the midst of the land. So understand that the prophets were, their whole uh, job was, this is where I can tell you, you can separate a real prophet of today from these, uh, of, of that time than from what we call us, what are considered prophets today. What are considered prophets today are scams. Now, let me explain to you how to identify a real prophet. First of all, we got to look at the prophets. Every one of the prophets, what was their job? Their job was to warn the people about this day that we just talked about, number one. So that's your first test. If you call yourself a prophet and I never once hear you talk about the day of Yahuwah, you are a scam. Number two, the prophets also reminded you to get out of sin and obey the commandments. So if you're not pointing me back to obeying what the Most High said, then once again, you are a scam. Prophets don't prophesy houses, cars, relationships, money, and all the other stuff that you think. You have been involved with a soothsayer witch and you don't even know it because you don't have a spiritual relationship with the most high to be able to discern it. That's the bottom line. And so you need to get to a place where you can understand the scam and identify it, but be able to have a spirit of discernment to know what's right and what's wrong. And every one of these prophets, my favorite prophet we dealt with tonight is the prophet Isaiah because he gives stern warning of this day of the Lord, as they call it, or the day of Yahuwah that nobody wants to talk about, and but yet nobody wants to be prepared for. I am prepared. Are you, is your preacher preparing you? Or are you going to church as a, a, as a place to meet every Sunday and watch a performance? Because at the end of the day, it all means nothing if you close your eyes and end up in hell because nobody told you what's right. Well, the reality of it is I'm not asking for your offering. 
All I want is your attention and for you to pull out your Bible. Once again, everything I talk about on this channel, we look at the scripture. So if you have a problem with something I say or something I, 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 I talk about, then you need to take it up with Yahuwah like I tell each and every person because at the end of the day, it's not what I wrote. It's what he commanded. I am the Minister ML Kimball. Until next time, be blessed on